4.2 graph quadratic functions in vertex or intercept form. This comic is not something that you're really going to understand. You'll need to take calculus before you'll really understand it. But right down here, this is going to be our vertex. And our vertex is what our parabola is symmetric over. And so this is called our vertex right here. And that's what we'll be talking a lot about in this lesson. Today we're going to be looking at a bunch of quadratic functions in vertex form. And I think I might have a typo on your PowerPoint. So if I do, please change that. Vertex form is just y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And you might recall the h and k from when we were graphing the absolute value functions to find our vertex. Well, guess what? That h, k is going to be our same vertex here. And so when I have x minus h, that quantity squared, that means that I move h units to the right just like with the absolute value functions, and then plus k would mean k units up. The axis of symmetry in this case would just be this line, which is x equals h. If a is greater than zero, then that means my graph opens up and if a is less than zero that means my graph opens down. Let's go ahead and graph y equals one half x plus two the quantity squared minus three. Let's start by identifying our vertex. Our vertex is negative two, negative three because remember that vertex form is a times x minus h squared plus k, where h, k is the vertex. So this would have been x minus a minus two if I wanted to write it as x minus h, where h is negative two. If our vertex is negative two, negative three, our axis of symmetry is just going to be x equals negative two. So let's go ahead and plot that. Negative two, one, two, three. And that's our axis of symmetry. Why don't we put in x equals zero? That would be real easy. So we know that it's all gonna be symmetric over this negative two, negative three. So let's go ahead and put in the zero. If we put in a zero for x, we get one half, zero plus two is two squared minus three, which is four divided by two is two. Two minus three is negative one. And so that would be a point. Zero, negative one is a point. Since we have that this is our axis of symmetry, well, we know that since I went over two units that way, I could go over two units this way, and I would get the same y-coordinate. And let's just go ahead and find one more point for good measure. Let's just do two. So if we put in two, we would get one half. Two plus two is four squared minus three. Four squared is 16. And 16 divided by two is eight, minus three is just five. So let's go ahead and graph that point. So over two, one, two, three, four, five. Again, look, we, from our axis of symmetry, we went over one, two, three, four units this way. So if we go over one, two, three, four units that way, that should also be a point. And there's our parabola. We know since the value of a is one half, it should be wider than just y equals x squared. 
and it also, since this is positive, we know that it's opening up, which it is. On the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, each cable can be modeled by this function here. And here's a graph down here. What are the minimum and maximum distances between the suspension cables and the roadway? So they want to know what like the largest suspension cable is and what the shortest one. So this would be the longest. So the maximum is just going to be that 307 feet. And our minimum is going to be whatever the height is right at our vertex. So why don't we think a little bit about that? Well, since we have this function, we know that our vertex right here is at the point 1427. That would be our vertex. And so that means that this height right here is just 27. In other words, the minimum is 27 feet. In part B, they ask us, what is the distance between the two towers? Well, I know that I went 1,400 feet to get to the vertex, so I would have to go another 1,400 feet to get to the other tower. So, 1,400 plus 1,400 is equal to 2,800 feet. Now let's look when our equation is an intercept form. I call it intercept forms because my x-intercepts are sitting right here in the equation, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Intercept form will just be of the form a times some quantity times some other quantity. It's necessary that I have some quantities times some other quantity because at the end of the day, I want the power associated with the x, the largest power associated with the x, to be squared. And since I would FOIL here, my power would be x squared, which is what I want in order for it to be a quadratic. So when I have a function in this form, let's first think about what the x-intercepts are. The x-intercept means what is x when y is 0. So if I have 0 equals a times x minus p times x minus q, well something very special about when two things are multiplied and I get 0 is that one or the other thing must be zero. The only way for two things to multiply together and get zero is for one or the other to be zero. In this case, I can't let a be zero because if a was zero, I would just have y equals zero and that would not be a quadratic, you know, that would be a line. And so in this case, either the zero is equal to this quantity or the zero is equal to that quantity. And so if I solved this, I would get x equals p or x equals q, and those are my intercepts. So I'm just going to label one of these p and the other of these q. Then our axis of symmetry lies halfway between the p0 and the q0. So what is that? That is just x equals halfway in between the two. x equals p plus q over 2. The x-intercepts, as we just said, were p and q. And yet again, if this a is greater than 0, it just means that it opens up, and if a is less than zero, it just means that it opens down. So in this form, I have my x-intercepts sitting there, and let's do an example. In this one, I could, if I really, really wanted to, I could rewrite this as negative x minus zero 
times x minus 4. I don't think this is necessary, but if you want to think about it like that, you certainly can. My x-intercepts are just let this be 0 or let this be 0. So let the x be equal to 0 or let this x minus 4 be equal to 0, in which case I get x equals 4. I don't want you just memorizing the equation that we just did. So these are my x-intercepts. That means that one point is 0, 0, and the other point is 4, 0. That's the x-intercept. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0, 0. Our axis of symmetry is just halfway in between. Halfway between 0 and 4 is 2. And let's go ahead and find the vertex. Well, the vertex is going to be where x is 2. What is y when x is 2? We get y equals negative 2 times 2 minus 4. In other words, negative 2 times negative 2 or 4. So our point is 2, 4. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That axis of symmetry is just x equals 2. We could pick one more point to draw this, to check. But we know that our graph should be opening down because our a is negative, and it does. So that's good. If an object is propelled straight upward from Earth at an initial velocity of 80 feet per second, its height after t seconds is given by this function here. How many seconds after it is propelled will the object hit the ground? Well, the object will hit the ground when this y is 0. So it hits the ground when y equals 0. I say that because it says that its height is given by this function, and so it hits the ground when the height is 0. That's when it's on the ground. So when does this equal 0? Well, those are just my x-intercepts. So I can think either this guy equals 0 or this guy equals 0. So either this negative 16t equals 0 or this t minus 5 equals 0. In other words, t equals 0 or t equals 5. Well, why did I get two answers? Well, at time 0, it was on the ground. Then it goes up, so kind of like that, and then it comes back down and hits the ground. So after how many seconds, after it was propelled, will the object hit the ground? Our answer is just this five seconds. What is the object's maximum height? Well, if I was able to find my vertex, I know this is going down since that's negative, and so my maximum would just be wherever my vertex is. The maximum height is going to be the y-coordinate of my vertex. So I know that my axis of symmetry is halfway in between my two x-intercepts. In other words, at, I'm just going to say t equals 2.5 in this example. And so when they ask me, what is the maximum height, what is y when t is 2.5? Well, that's going to be y equals negative 16 times 2.5 times 2.5 minus 5 negative 16 times 2.5 times negative 2.5 and that comes out to 100 feet.
Now I want to go back to writing these in standard form, which was just our ax squared plus bx plus c. And all I do in this is I FOIL. I would start by letting that 3 hang out and just FOIL this stuff. So x times x is x squared. The outer is plus 6x. Inner minus 4x. Last minus 24. Now I would combine like terms before I go distributing that 3. So that's plus 2x minus 24. And finally, I would distribute that 3 out. So I would get 3x squared plus 6x minus 72. And that is my equation in standard form. The final question asks you to write f of x equals negative 1 half times the quantity x plus 8 squared plus 35 in standard form. I believe that this I copied wrong on your PowerPoint and I gave you the answer. So let's get to that. Um, let's start by, again, let this negative 1 half just hang out for a moment. And so let's FOIL this part. Whenever I have a quantity squared, I must FOIL. I always say FOIL or FAIL. So don't forget that. Let that negative 1 half hang out while I FOIL. x squared plus the outer is 8x. Inner is 8x. That last is 64. Plus 35 Combine the like terms in the parentheses before I distribute. Now you must distribute. So we get negative 1 half x squared minus 8x minus 32 plus 35. In other words, y equals negative 1 half x squared minus 8x plus 3. And that would be our equation in standard form. And that's it for this lesson.